So hi everyone. My new book, Lanchin in Your Pocket: Beginner's Guide to Building Gen AI Applications Using LLMs, is out now on Amazon. The book is already a bestseller. As you can see, it is trending on hash three on Amazon bestsellers. So go get, grab your copies and find the link in the description below. Thank. You. So hi everyone. Today we are talking about a very important issue that most of the guys are facing with vector DBs. That is, they are not able to use vector DB for a big data set. They are, I have been getting many queries that how can we generate embeddings for a bigger data set and then persist it and then load it. So eventually all the tutorials online right now cater about how you can read a document instantaneously. So you are generating the embeddings and then reading it and then eventually regenerating the embeddings if you read it up, if you need to uh, do some analysis on the document again. But at times uh, in real world that won't be possible because creating embeddings takes a lot of time. Apart from that, the databases that we have in, the, in our production systems are huge. So you won't be generating embeddings on the fly every time, right? So you want to have a vector DB that you can store and then eventually when you wish to use it, you want to fetch. So today I will be demonstrating that how you can store a vector DB, save it and then eventually load it for your purpose. So I've already explained how vector DB works, a basic code line. So I would be missing out on a few things. So if you find anything strange, you are not able to understand anything, refer to my previous video. So first of all, we'll start off by tip installing sentence transformers in Chroma DB version. Do remember that both Chroma DB or Langchain, anything around generative A is very is under rapid development. So do use the uh, versions that are mentioned. So after that, import the Chroma DB, import embedding functions. Now while creating the client for the Chroma DB, do remember that we instead of client, we are doing a persistent client and then providing the path Langchain in your pocket. So if you don't have a local host to host your DB. You need to have a uh, folder in which you will be saving your database. So here you can see that in this particular folder, Langchain in your pocket, I'm able to save my data. So uh, you need to provide the path of the folder where you want to save the uh, vector DB after creation. The next step is easy and I have already explained. You are loading an embedding function that is all mini LM L6 V2 from sentence transformer embedding function. This I have already explained. So do refer to that. Now we are creating a collection. Collection is basically in, uh, can be taken as a database uh, which uh, as you use in Postgres or SQL. Take it like that or it's a table name basically. So name equals to Langchain. So the path is Langchain in your pocket and the name is Langchain. I'm using this word because it's my new book Langchain in your pocket that you can check out in the description below. Now we have created a new table, a new collection we call in vector DB with the name Langchain and the path is Langchain in your pocket. Now we are reading this file book.txt. From here, this is the file that I'm reading and I will be generating embeddings for this and then storing it and then collection dot add documents equals to data after uh, line by line. I'm reading it embeddings equals to the function that I've already created sentence transform embedding function and the last one is IDs I'm assigning collection dot add. That's it. Now, once you're done, your database would get stored in the particular folder. As you can see here. These are some code words, uh, some uh, hash coding that has been done. So you won't be able to read it manually, but we'll be using some codes to read this database that we have created. Now the database is created, just store in the folder, Langchain in your pocket. You can name it anything. Now how to load this? This is the important part and people are getting a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of confusion around this. So if you're loading it in the same script, like I'm demonstrating here, uh, then though I would be using the same Chroma client, but if you're using uh, loading it in the fresh script, I most probably you will be creating it once and then using it most of the times. So you need to again create this chroma db dot persistent client. Do remember to provide the same path. Don't forget to provide the path because it will be able to read the collection from that path only. And then after creating the chroma client in the first time we were doing a create collection. Now the collection is created. Now we're doing a get collection and the name of the collection. So that's the easier. This is how you can load and save a chroma db vector. And I think most even FAST also or like uh, FAST and other Melvis also works on the same principle. So the parameter name may change, but the idea is same key. You need to first provide a path and then the collection name, generate your embedding, store it, and then get your collection and providing the collection name. And as a Chroma client is already a persistent client provided the path, we don't need to provide a path anywhere else. If you are using a fresh script, you need to repeat this whole thing. Chroma DB dot persistent client till here, till this particular point. And when you are creating a new collection, instead of creating a new collection, you need to go dot get underscore collection. Now I am able to load this database and then I am doing a query on this database for free book. 
for example i'm checking out in my particular post that i posted around my book what are the lines that read about the free book so as you can see that i'm getting um, relevant results right so this is how you can load a vector db you can store a vector db and then eventually load it and this is very very helpful in drag when you are going for real world applications thank you do check out my book it's in the description below